the book of Obadiah. The vision of Obadiah. This is what the Lord God says about Edom. We have heard news from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the nations, saying, Arise, and let's rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made you small among the nations. You are greatly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you, you who dwell in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, who says in his heart, Who will bring me down to the ground? Though you mount on as high as the eagle, and though your nest is set among the stars, I will bring you down from there, says the Lord. If thieves came to you, if robbers by night, oh, what disaster awaits you! Wouldn't they only steal until they had enough? If grape pickers came to you, wouldn't they leave some gleaning grapes? How Esau will be ransacked! How his hidden treasures are sought out! All the men of your alliance have brought you on your way, even to the border. The men who are at peace with you have deceived you and prevailed against you. Friends who eat your bread lay a snare under you. There is no understanding in him. Won't I in that day, says the Lord, destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mountain of Esau? Your mighty men, Teman, will be dismayed, to the end that everyone may be cut off from the mountain of Esau by slaughter. For the violence done to your brother Jacob, shame will cover you, and you will be cut off forever. In the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that strangers carried away his substance, and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, even you were like one of them. But don't look down on your brother in the day of his disaster, and don't rejoice over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Don't speak proudly in the day of distress. Don't enter into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Don't look down on their affliction in the day of their calamity, neither seize their wealth on the day of their calamity. Don't stand in the crossroads to cut off those of his who escape. Don't deliver up those of his who remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near all the nations. As you have done, it will be done to you. Your deeds will return upon your own head. For as you have drunk on my holy mountain, so will all the nations drink continually. Yes, they will drink, swallow down, and will be as though they had not been. But in Mount Zion there will be those who escape, and it will be holy. The house of Jacob will possess their possessions. The house of Jacob will be a fire, the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. They will burn among them and devour them. There will not be any remaining to the house of Esau. Indeed, the Lord has spoken. Those of the south will possess the mountain of Esau, and those of the lowland the Philistines. They will possess the field of Ephraim and the field of Samaria. Benjamin will possess Gilead. The captives of this host of the children of Israel, who are among the Canaanites, will possess even the Zarephath. And the captives of Jerusalem, who are in Sepharad, will possess the cities of the Negev. Saviors will go up on Mount Zion to judge the mountains of Esau, and the kingdom will be the Lord's. THE BOOK OF JONAH Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid its fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was likely to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it. But Jonah had gone down into the inmost parts of the ship, and he was laying down and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your gods. Maybe the gods will notice us so that we won't perish. They all said to each other, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is on us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they asked him, Tell us, please, for whose cause this evil is on us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? Of what people are you? He said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord the God of heaven, who has made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said to him, 
What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm to us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Take me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will be calm for you, for I know that because of me this great tempest is on you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to get them back to the land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried to the Lord and said, We beg you, Lord, we beg you, let us not perish for this man's life, and don't lay on us innocent blood, for you, Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they took up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. The Lord prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. He said, I called because of my affliction to the Lord. He answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, You heard my voice, for you threw me into the depths, in the heart of the seas. The flood was all around me, all your waves and your billows passed over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The water surrounded me, even to the soul. The deep was around me, the weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth barred me in forever. Yet have you brought up my life from the pit, Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. My prayer came into you, into your holy temple. Those who regard lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I have vowed. Salvation belongs to the Lord. The Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited out Jonah on the dry land. The word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I give you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey across. Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. The people of Nineveh believed God, and they proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them even to the least of them. The news reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and took off his royal robes, and covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. He made a proclamation and published it through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor animal, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let them be covered with sackcloth, both man and animal, and let them cry mightily to God. Yes, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows whether God will not turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we might not perish. God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. God repented of the evil which he said he would do to them, and he didn't do it. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, Please, Lord, wasn't this what I said when I was still in my own country? Therefore I hurried to flee to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, and you repent of the evil. Therefore now, Lord, take, I beg you, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. The Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made himself a booth, and sat under it in the shade, until he might see what would become of the city. The Lord God prepared a vine, and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shade over his head, to deliver him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the vine. But God prepared a worm at dawn the next day, and it chewed on the vine so that it withered. It happened, when the sun arose, that God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he fainted, 
and requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is better for me to die than to live. God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the vine? He said, I am right to be angry, even to death. The Lord said, You have been concerned for the vine, for which you have not labored, neither made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. Shouldn't I be concerned for Nineveh, that great city, in which are more than 120,000 persons who can't discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? After these things I looked and saw a door opened in heaven, and the first voice that I heard, like a trumpet speaking with me, was one saying, Come up here, and I will show you the things which must happen after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit. Behold, there was a throne set in heaven, and one sitting on the throne, that looked like a jasper stone in a sardis. There was a rainbow around the throne, like an emerald to look at. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones. On the thrones were twenty-four elders sitting, dressed in white garments, with crowns of gold on their heads. Out of the throne proceeds lightnings, sounds, and thunders. There were seven lamps of fire burning before his throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne was something like a sea of glass, like a crystal. In the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes before and behind. The first creature was like a lion, and the second creature like a calf, and the third creature had a face like a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, having each one of them six wings, are full of eyes around about and within. They have no rest day and night, saying, Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. When the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to Him who sits on the throne, to Him who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before Him who sits on the throne and worship Him who lives forever and ever and throw their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, the Holy One, to receive the glory, the honor, and the power, for you created all things, and because of your desire they existed and were created. I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written inside and outside, sealed shut with seven seals. I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to break its seals? No one in heaven above or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the book or to look in it. And I wept much because no one was found worthy to open the book or to look in it. One of the elders said to me, Don't weep. Behold, the lion who is of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome. He who opens the book and its seven seals. I saw in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders a lamb standing as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and he took it out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each one having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the book and to open its seals. For you were killed and bought us for God with your blood out of every tribe, language, people, and nation, and made them kings and priests to our God, and they reign on earth. I saw and I heard something like a voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousands of ten thousands and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who has been killed to receive the power, riches, wisdom, might, honor, glory, and blessing. I heard every created thing which is in heaven, on the earth, under the earth, on the sea, and everything in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb be the blessing, the honor, the glory, and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. The four living creatures said, Amen. The elders fell down and worshipped. Psalm 132 Yahweh remembered David in all his affliction, how he swore to Yahweh and vowed to the Mighty One of Jacob, Surely I will not come into the structure of my house, nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids, until I find out a place for Yahweh, 
a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. Behold, we heard of it in Ephrathah, we found it in the field of Jaar. We will go into his dwelling place, we will worship at his footstool. Arise, Yahweh, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, let your saints shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, don't turn away the face of your anointed one. Yahweh has sworn to David in truth, he will not turn from it. I will set the fruit of your body on your throne. If your children will keep my covenant, my testimony that I will teach them, their children also will sit on your throne forevermore. For Yahweh has chosen Zion, he has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever, here I will live, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision, I will satisfy her poor with bread. Her priest I will also clothe with salvation, her saints will shout aloud for joy. There I will make the horn of David to bud, I have ordained a lamp for my anointed. I will clothe his enemies with shame, but on himself his crown will be resplendent. Psalm 133 See how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head that ran down on the beard, even Aaron's beard, that came down on the edge of his robes, like the dew of Hermon that comes down on the hills of Zion, for there Yahweh gives the blessing, even life forevermore. Whoever is an accomplice of a thief is an enemy of his own soul. He takes an oath, but dares not testify. The fear of man proves to be a snare, but whoever puts his trust in Yahweh is kept safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but a man's justice comes from Yahweh. A dishonest man detests the righteous, and the upright in their ways detests the wicked.